Aloha, happy Friday. I'm Kaui Lucas with Hawaii is my mainland. Lots going on in the world of sovereignty and indigenous struggles of late. And so to explore those themes a little bit today, I have Heilani Sonoda Pali, who is the founder of Protest Na'i Aupuni. And we'll, um, we'll just jump in and um, talk about the, the Na'i Aupuni. I have done shows exploring Na'i Aupuni with um, Katie Kamelamela, who oh. was a participant. Right. And, um, and now we, ha we are in this uh, uncomfortable and interesting situation exactly. where um, the Department of Interior has clearly defined these rather narrow parameters for right. if we want to have a nation-to-nation -nation relationship, mm -hmm. um, what, uh, what it has to be. And it seems like there are certain pockets of the Hawaiian community that are trying to cut all the edges so we fit in that box. But it's terribly complicated. Helani, please. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, let's let's talk about the article that came out um, right. just a couple days ago in the Honolulu Star Advertiser. Um, ratification of Hawaiian Constitution gains kokua. Hmm. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay. From whom and not from everyone, right? Right, right. I, I well, it's it's going to be the same. It's they're probably mostly homestead associations, and the Shaw CMHA. Um, CMHA has a lot of member. Um, that's, organizations. That's the Council for Native Hawaiian yes. Advancement. And okay. that's run, um, you, it was founded by Robin Danner, it's now being head by Michelle Kauhane. Uh, this is all propaganda uh, for their their nation building scam. Right now, <clears throat> uh, the DOI rule has been finalized. It's, um, it's a rule that provides for no lands for Hawaiians except for the island of Ko'olawe. No restitution for Hawaiians for the overthrow, the illegal overthrow of the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1893. And um, basically is a violation of our human right to self-determination as a people. That's been finalized in September. And what that, that does is create a pathway so that um, an entity can become a federally recognized nation, AKA tribe. And what they're doing is they're taking Robin Danner, John Waihe'e Sr., Michelle Kauhane, and all of their little cronies are taking this Na'i Aupuni Constitution that was drafted in February of this year by unelected delegates. It was funded totally by Office of Hawaiian Affairs, which is a state agency. And it was uh, created and basically run by, with state monies. Uh, and all of them got stipends, by the way. The Constitution was written in, and this, I got this straight from Brendan Lee, in 10 days. A Constitution was written in 10 days. That in itself tells you that Constitution is um, basically not even worth the paper it's written on. How can we use or push a constitution that was written in 10 days behind lock gates? And, and not from people who are trained in constitutional law. Not at all. They, they were given a, um, somebody came in and gave, gave some talks on, on what constitutions are and can be. I, I, right. I understand. And, but the, and it was funny <laughs> because their speaker who, who came and spoke on the constitution said, first thing he said, the fact that there's people outside protesting this is a very bad sign. <laughs> but you know, and then the uh, eight, eight uh, Kanaka Maoli, including myself, got arrested outside the gates when we tried to um, enter into the convention and uh, share our concerns. Uh, so they're taking this constitution that has, it's basically paid and brought by OHA, a state agency, and is supported by the Democratic Party. Um, they're taking this constitution and they're trying to um, push it out into the community. They're taking it into safe spaces in the community. Uh, a few days ago, they took it out to Kapolei. They had a, they had a constitution workshop there. I went, I've been to one myself. It's, you know, it's not very enlightening, I can tell you that, because that constitution is really a piece of crap. Um, and then they're also fundraising. They have a grant that they have been 
uh, pushing to Native American nations, tribes, uh, and also to nonprofit organizations that support these Native American movements. They're pushing this grant for $2 million to ratify their constitution. This constitution that they're seeing in their grant is represents a cross-section of the Kanaka Maoli people and represents um, who we are. It represents Mana'o from the independence it's really and federal recognition. Draw dropping to claim that an unelected body Exactly. <laughs> it uh, definitely possibly, does not represent yeah. us and it doesn't represent our Mana'o and the diversity of our people. Uh, we have and they're they're running on the conclusion that there is oh what's the what's the alternative? Right, and that's where Aha Aloha Aina comes in. We are the alternative. I am a member of the Aha Aloha Aina and a convener. Um, we're kind of a leaderless organization. You know, we, we're really from the grassroots. We work with the community. So I, I don't like to push myself out there as a leader, but I do work in the Aha Aloha Aina. And we, we've convened uh, over 30 Ahas. We have a we have a, a graphic of, um, on the attendance at these meetings. Oh, okay. Well, we don't have the graphic. Oh well. <laughs> um, it'll be up in uh, some sort of social media <laughs> uh, on on my Facebook page at, at at the very least. But so there have been meetings. The Aha Aloha Aina is this this um, very very grassroots they yeah. have refused to take money from from anybody from state or federal governments yeah right so it's just everybody really giving because mm -hmm. they feel passionately about that and because it it feels like it's the clean right pono thing to do right so not just on Oahu meetings on five islands i believe and there was like oh uh, yeah over over like 2200 yes people yeah, yes. as of as of, of October? I, would, I think it's up to 2400 now so i mean we were continually going out into the communities and uh the reason why we don't take any state or federal monies is because we do not with, with money comes strings with money comes um uh certain things that we need to do um in return so we don't we don't take any state or federal monies. So, so concrete big issues um, uh, as far as the Na'i Aupuni um, Constitution for people who haven't actually read it or followed it. Um, so, it it applies to ethnic Hawaiians or political Hawaiians? Ethnic Hawaiians, yes. Only. Okay. Let's yes. be clear that so it does not address any of the overthrow. Does not address uh, the the citizens of the. Kingdom, it does not address the political, um, political Hawaiians, Hawaiians. political yeah. Hawaiians. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the it's a um, it's you know it's a race based, uh, basically process, um, but I I can't say that I don't support you know Hawaiians coming first, because I believe that with the overthrow of the Hawaiian kingdom, and with um, the colonization of the Hawaiian Islands, Hawaiians have suffered the most. It's, it's, we have felt the brunt of the overthrow. Um, and it's been 123 years, and we're still on the bottom of every statistic in Hawaii. So we are the, we are the people suffering. And you look at where our situation today, it's pretty, it's, uh, pretty bleak. Uh, and which brings me to the point of all the monies that they spent on this whole federal recognition campaign, including their push for our Kaka bill. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs has spent over $33 million on their campaign for federal recognition, which has gone nowhere, absolutely nowhere. And you look at the people who got monies from these campaigns, it's usually the same. It's all their friends. It's all um, their supporters. And it's a very select group of people. Uh, Na'iau Puni got $2.6 million, and they had $200,000 left over at the end of it. I was there at the, at the court case when um, Judicial Watch had sued the Na'iau Puni um, organization for um, creating a race-based um, vote, right? They wanted to stop it. And in that court case, 
the OHA lawyers said that Na'iaupuni was dissolved and that they were returning the $200,000 back to OHA. I have yet to, um, there, there's, I'm, I know Trustee Akana is trying to find out what happened to that $2,000 if it was ever returned. But what's interesting is that um, the Aloha, so Na'iaupuni is dissolved, supposedly, right? And Al Aloha Lahui is in the new organization that they created. Um, it's, it's a group of people that came from the Na'iaupuni AHA that want to move the Na'iaupuni constitution forward and want to ratify it. And so they created another organization uh, and they have an account with the Tides Foundation, which Emmett Aluli, who was a Na'iaupuni delegate, um, sits on the board. So they, cre they create an account who, there. Who is the Tides Foundation, though? Do you know what I, I mean? What is it? Is it a, a, is it a 501c3 or a C4? Yeah, yeah. Or? Uh, I, I believe it's, they, what that, that's kind of like what they do is they, they help out, you know, organizations and they, you know, they do help them do fundraising and so forth. So they have about $265,000 in that account. And it looks very suspicious because where did that $200,000 come from? And then, you know, so we're, we're thinking that, I mean, I don't want to say it, but it looks very suspicious. There's, a miss, there's missing $200,000 from the Na'iel Puni, aha. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, the Tides Foundation has $265,000. I know 50000 of it came from Pelotron, which is an, uh, a company that ha works with the U.S. military. And <laughs> it's like they're taking military monies as well. They basically have no scruples in terms of who they take money from, um, what they say. They will say and do anything uh, to push this constitution forward. They what do you think? What do you think is their driving? I mean, I've been in the, on the other side so long. I, it was Good like, question. Like what? Yeah. Like, why? Why are they doing that? I tried to get that um, at the that forum, the Aha Aloha Aina forum. I was like, I'm, I'm not really okay. We we don't get any land. No. Uh, uh, and it's race-based, uh, and there's no real uh, political um, gain here that I can see except that we're relinquishing the opportunity to redress historic rights. Right. Relinquishing. We're so we forever. get to, right. So where's the game? Yeah. I think um, for them, it's obviously money uh, with uh, some kind of federally recognized nation, even though we're not going to have any land, there's going to be that opportunity to bypass state laws and state um, and city and county laws um, and basically kind of bypass all of them and just create their own kind of um, uh, corporate partnerships, you know? So, Without and land, it, it just doesn't seem to make yeah, any sense. Yeah, well, they're making a lot of, these guys are the guys that are making monies off the grants at, as we speak, you know? Ah, off the grants. Yeah. So okay. it's, it's about grants, it's about monies. So. Okay, let's take a little break and then come back and then maybe talk about some of the um, associations between the Hawaiian uh, resistance and what's happening in North Dakota. Sure. Aloha everybody, my name is Mark Shklov. I'd like you to join me for my program, Law Across the Sea, on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stacy Hayashi, and you can catch me on Mondays at 11 on Think Tech Hawaii. Stacy to the rescue. See you then. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider, and we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock. And we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners. And I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kawi Lucas, and with me here today is Hailani Sonoda Pali, who is the founder of Protest Na'i Aupuni, 
and uh, one of the core members of the Aha Aloha Aina, which is a grassroots movement, really truly grassroots movement that is trying to infuse integrity into the process of Hawaiian nationhood, uh, where a lot of other organizations seem to be willing to um, just sort of uh, say, well, you know, we're, nothing's going to happen. We just have to uh, go ahead and be part of the U.S. system. So um, that there, there is another way to think about it. Right, right. I think education is the key. And that's a big part of what the Aha Aloha Aina is as well. Uh, we do education in the community. We share with them um, that this is not the only path available to us. And uh, we, we don't buy into that whole uh, boogeyman, this is the last moment, we need to do it now or never kind of um, explanation. I think the Hawaiian people need to be educated. They need, uh, we need to take the time to go out there and educate our people. And that's exactly what Na'iapuni and Kana'i Olovalo has not done. They, they spent and wasted millions of dollars and all they've done is propaganda and absolutely no education. And that is a travesty because that's all Hawaiian trust monies. Imagine if they took that $33 million that they wasted on this path to federal recognition and they went out and they actually educated Hawaiians on the overthrow, on what happened, on where we're going to go from here and what are our options. What really are our, are our options? And if the option of independence is not one of the options, then we really don't have any options. Independence needs to be a choice as part of what that right to self-determination is. It's a human right recognized by the United Nations. Um, it was basically a uh, right given to indigenous peoples, uh, 500 million indigenous peoples around the world uh, in 2007 by the United, uh, United Nations. Uh, in something called UNDRIP, United Nations Draft Decla um, Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. And in that declaration, it specifically states that Indigenous peoples have the right to self-determination to pursue their um, political, economic, cultural future. So um, in, that, in that case, to have the choice of where we want to go, we need to have the choice of independence as a real choice and not um, as a choice, as put on the table so that they can debunk it. And that's what happened at Na'iyao Puni. They said, oh, well, you know, all these people are independents, but they absolutely did not take the independence uh, faction seriously. They didn't take the, they, they basically, you know, put them in a corner and they, you know, didn't take it seriously. They, wow, basically, what the path that they're going on and they, they were in denial, 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 from the beginning that this process is not, is not being tailored towards federal recognition. And now we know that it is because they're taking this constitution and tailoring it and getting it ready for ratification and set up for the Department of Interior rule. Um, independence was not something that was on the table, at, really on the table. It was just put out there to say, hey, you know, we're considering it, but it wasn't really, really considered seriously. So at that forum, when the um, uh, Robin Denner and Michelle Kauhani were um, talking about, oh, well, um, having a nation within a nation or a federal recognition doesn't extinguish the possibility of, a, of Hawaiian independence. And I, yes. I, 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 di I didn't understand that. That is totally false. Uh, there is not one example of one federally recognized tribe or nation that has achieved independence. Not at all. And in fact, if they go to the UN, they're actually told, you know, the US will basically say, hey, they're, they're federally recognized, they're under the Department of Interior, you know, this is our business, you know. So, it, it, it really does hinder um, any kind of pathway towards independence. And when you look at our history, we were never really incorporated into the United States legally by the laws of the U.S. or by any law. Where's really. the treaty? Yeah, there was no treaty of annexation. We were annexed uh, via uh, 
joint resolution of the House and Senate, uh, the Newlands resolution, and um, even that was an illegal act by the U.S. We were supposed to be um, annexed as with a treaty of annexation, not a reso. A reso only requires a 50% um, majority vote or you know 51% vote or more uh, to pass, whereas a treaty requires the three-fourths vote to pass Congress. And um, they weren't able to get the three-fourths vote, so they passed the resolution. So in, in terms of are we even part of the United States, we're really not. And what this does, and then there's another level to this whole Department of Interior rule is it finally incorporates us into the United States. So that's the insidious layer that um, yeah, that's when you spend layer time of it. Yeah. Um, really going through the documents, you find out. But um, if I'm reading the Star Advertiser, I really don't get that. Um, or yeah. even Civil Beat. I don't know. Civil Beat's done a, a, a better job, actually. But right. It's um, those really big issues uh, for yeah. Native Hawaiians that don't seem to be um, getting enough uh, daylight. Um, right, right. Yeah, and, and that's unfortunate. I mean, we need more writers. We need more people to put articles out there and tell our side of the story. Uh, this, the, and it comes, all comes down, this whole push for Depart the Department of Interior Rule and the Yelpuni Constitution comes down to the two million acres of land that the state currently holds in trust for us. And um, because, and the U.S. Congress recognized in 1993, we never relinquished our rights to those lands or our sovereignty over those lands. And therefore, this is a way, this is a process where they will relinquish, where, where a group of sellout Hawaiians like Robin Danner and Michelle Kauhane, uh, Brendan Lee, uh, John Waihe'e Sr. will take, um, will basically sign that paper and say, hey, we relinquish all of this for federal recognition of a paper nation with no lands. And uh, I, I don't know how they can really honestly believe that we can survive on Kaolave. <laughs> There's no hospital. There's no schools. There's no water. What are you talking no housing. about? There's no water. Right. <laughs> um, this it's it's just mind boggling to think that that's all we're entitled to, and the Department of Interior has re uh, released a memo. I think it was in 2014 that basically outlined, hey, Hawaiians, you guys aren't entitled to any federally held lands. All the all the bases are sits on stolen Hawaiian lands, right? All the U.S. bases, yeah. the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands, yeah, yeah. And then, eighty-eight million acres. <laughs> let's let's not start on that one. <laughs> Those, but, that's all federally held lands that we will not be entitled to. You know, that's off the table, and they specifically state in that memo, all you'll be entitled to is the Koalabe. So, hey, Alani, um, this week um, also some of the. Uh, a uh, core Hawaiian activist group have, have um, been spending time in North Dakota, and I've been seeing yeah. more and more um, sort of interactions. Can you um, talk about that, and why, yeah. why is that important? Why, why are Hawaiians really there? It's really important. I think we need to be, we, are in, uh, we, need, we stand in solidarity with uh, North Dakota, uh, Lakota, and Sioux tribes of Standing Rock. Uh, we are... We both have similar histories in terms of being colonized by the United States. And when you, I think it serves a, a couple purposes, but really when you look at how they're being treated, right, they're a federally recognized nation with, you know, a land base that's shrinking. Uh, it, it really brings it home. Like, this is what we want for our people? Is this really what we want for Hawaiians, for Kanaka Maoli? Yeah, do we want to be treated like that? Right, and uh, also it's important to be standing in solidarity with them. Um, we we need to support them, and they they have supported us. Um, you know, a lot of us have made connections and net created networks with um, Native American tribes uh, around the U.S. And um, the reason why we know that uh, the Na'iapuni Constitution grant. The Aloha Lahui grant that Robin Danner, Waihe'e Sr., and Norma Wong is pushing um, 
throughout the Native American tribes is because we're friends with them. And so they come back and tell us, hey, you know, I got this grant and what should I do with it? You know, I got this request for monies. And so we've been kind of building the, those connections and those networks with them. And I think even more so standing in solidarity with so them. So explain how that, that, that grant money works. So they, um, who is getting the grant? And what are they using it for? They're, they're asking for $2 million from Native American tribes and organizations that support these tribes. To make Hawaii a tribe? To make, to ratify their constitution. To ratify their constitution. Yeah, they have a whole timeline. I saw the grant. They're looking at ratifying the constitution in October of 2017. And so they're hoping to, you know, once they ratify that constitution, that's one of the, in the Department of Interior rule, that was one of the requirements, that they need to have a constitution that was ratified oh, right. by no less than 30,000 Kanaka Maoli of blood, right? 50% uh, or? No, and 9,000 of them have to be 50% or more. 9,000, okay. Yeah. So by, t by uh, going to Standing Rock and um, talking to the uh, uh, Native Americans there and explaining to them that um, this isn't a process that we actually want. Um, is there is there some hope that there will be some support for um, independence or? Yeah, I I think we we have already built uh, many of our leaders that have gone up there are, are building that momentum and support and those networks um, for our movement as well, and you can see that a lot. I mean, our our people are up there, not just. I mean, they're, they're in, on the ground working. You know, we had Dr. Kalamani Hale go up there and she started the, um, the uh, council for um, healers, the healer council. council. Um, Andre Perez is another leader in our movement. He's up there, you know, doing whatever he can, doing training. Hey, Lenny, there is, there is so much going on. Um, yeah. I do hope that you will come back and um, give us um, more updates um, in sure, the future. Sure, of course. Thank you so much for trying to bring a little more clarity and, and having the uh, other side um, come up to the of surface course. a little bit. Of course. Thank you for having me.